Main article. Corellian Treaty. You never plan to destroy the Emperor. Not with you. No. Without me, you'll never be free. Starkiller and Darth Vader Bail Organa informed Starkiller that he, Garm Bel Iblis and Morn Mothma were conducting a series of meetings at Cantham House on Coruscant. The meetings were apparently going well, though Starkiller noted that the involvement of the two noted resistance leaders raised the stakes dangerously. During the interim, Starkiller hid out near Romamul, waiting for updates and using the time to purchase a new pair of shoulder servos for proxy. Starkiller also passed some of the time by sparring with Kota, but also had to dodge the Jedi's questions about his past. Soon thereafter, Starkiller was contacted by Darth Vader. With Juno witnessing the exchange, Starkiller informed the Dark Lord that while the pieces were falling into place, the rebels were still scared and were only beginning to trust him. Starkiller cautioned that if he and Vader were discovered communicating, or if the rebels even suspected his past, then the entire mission would be a failure. Vader stipulated that Starkiller contact him soon before severing the link. When Juno questioned Vader's intentions, Starkiller assured her that the Dark Lord wouldn't endanger the mission by intervening, regardless of his doubts. Starkiller further stated that he was doing what was right, for both himself and Juno. When they received word from Organa, they traveled to Corellia to meet with him and the other leaders. The meeting came to a swift conclusion, already establishing the command structure of the Alliance to restore the Republic. Bail Organa's wealth would fund the rebellion, Garm Bel Iblis would provide the military hardware and Morn Mothma the soldiery. Starkiller would be the ultimate leader and figurehead, his involvement providing the power of the Force. Ram Kota then appeared, sober and cleaned up, declaring that he would join as well, if he was welcome. Bail Organa finalized the Corellian Treaty, and rebellion was officially declared against the Galactic Empire. Just at that moment, the mountaintop temple ruin they were using as their meeting place was attacked by the Imperial military. As Imperial snowtroopers burst into the chamber, Organa ordered Proxy to cut Leia Organa's communication to hide her involvement. Darth Vader marched into the chamber, ordering his troopers to take the rebels alive for personal execution by the Emperor. Kota drew his lightsaber and rushed Vader, but the Sith Lord simply caught him in a telekinetic stranglehold and tossed him aside. With Kota disabled and the rebels surrounded by snowtroopers, Vader advanced on Starkiller, complementing his pupil's performance and revealing his status as the Dark Lord's secret apprentice to the shocked rebels. Vader then cast the stone table at the center of the chamber at Starkiller, driving him outside into the snow. Starkiller managed to survive thankful that his reconstruction on the empirical had drastically increased his physical endurance. Attempting to regain his feet, Starkiller angrily questioned Vader for interfering as the Sith Lord had agreed to stay away. Vader revealed that he had lied, and not just about Starkiller's mission, but from the very beginning. Starkiller quickly deduced that the very beginning referred to the start of his apprenticeship, and thus he realized that his entire life had been a sham, and that Vader never intended to destroy the Emperor. Darth Vader confirmed this, though he added that he didn't intend to dethrone the Emperor with Starkiller specifically. Lifting Starkiller in a force grip, Vader tossed him towards the edge of the mountaintop cliff, though Starkiller managed to cling to the brink. Accepting that his true mission, to gather the rebels for quick capture and execution, was complete, Starkiller concluded that he deserved to die for plotting to use the Rebel Alliance for his own ends, though he remained angry at having been outwitted. As Vader advanced to kill his own disciple, Starkiller declared that without him, Darth Vader would never be free. Vader raised his lightsaber and prepared to strike, but was forced to break off when he was attacked by Obi-Wan Kenobi. Though caught off guard, Vader quickly rallied and defeated his opponent, revealed to be proxy using his Obi-Wan Kenobi combat module. During the brief fight, Starkiller lost his grip of the cliff ledge and fell to the bottom. Although he survived the fall, Starkiller laid unconscious in the snow for some time. When Juno, who had escaped the Imperials, arrived aboard the Rogue Shadow to find him, Starkiller had regained consciousness, though he was still weak. When Juno came out to help him aboard, he revealed his birth name to her. 